So I want to walk you guys through um, what I do when I first start planning a garden in a new space because while I know it um, probably looks a little willy-nilly <laughs> when I'm, um, you know, placing things, there is some method to the madness and um, strategy to how I go about planting and how I go about planning. Even before I'm putting my vegetables in um, for the summer, I like to get some other things in place, like the minute my boots hit the ground. So um, what you're looking at here on this piece of paper is sort of a cross profile of the hillside slope that the garden is on that I'm currently working on. And um, you can see there's sort of these existing structures as far as there's this really beautiful um, rock garden with a um, sort of ephemeral pool in it and then some trees around it. And then there's a nice big grassy space in between that's just open area. This is going to be, you know, moving from wet to dry because of the way the slope's situated. So it's something we think about. And then moving up, there's this uh, rock wall that um, runs the length. It's really a retaining wall and something old that's been there for a while. So really working with the existing structure to be additive versus destructive and then try to rebuild. Um, and so, you know, working in this retaining wall, knowing that there actually used to be a bunch of trees. Um, there were like four big trees that were at the top of this wall. And then a fire came through three years ago and just took out this whole hilltop, really. So um, working in a space that's faced some level of disaster and destruction and figuring out, you know, how do we reintegrate some level of canopy in here and then also really work with the space, um, some of the spacing between the rocks and whatnot where there's soil now um, to continue to hold this, retain this wall, you know, hold it in place. Uh, moving up, there's a little bit more of a grassy space up here. I've cut myself off from the staircase over here, but um, basically what's going on is this back hill slope is all grapevines, which I am starting to build trellises for um, so that they can arch up and potentially produce everything here again was in the shade for the last who knows how many years those trees were quite large and so um, really you know playing to the strengths of the existing plants that had survived the fires and then um, also adding to that as we go. These spaces back here are the existing raised beds that somehow survived the fire um, and so we'll be working with those in the coming months for vegetables and whatnot. And then there's just a little path that goes into there and then off to some neighbors. Um, there's also, you know, there's <laughs> more retained wall on this side. There's a little bit of the hill, hill top part of the slope above the grapevines that's available on this side. There's a little patch that's next to the sidewalk. All of this is um, brick pavement. It was very detailed in my bricks <laughs> um, that leads to the house. But then, you know, there's a patch of soil that's here and then there's a bunch and so basically looking at this through a very expansive lens and a very additive lens and um, primarily working on the landscape around you know the paths that you traverse the most so it's what's the path that you take from the car to the house or from the house to you know wherever and so really planting with what's closest and most accessible in mind so you can keep an eye on those plants and see how they're doing and maybe they'll get eat a, eaten a little bit less by wildlife because they're a little closer to the house. Um, but also just, yeah, so that you can provide them a little more care and then expanding out from there. Um, I'm definitely scaling back in terms of how I like to manage plants um, rather than going, you know, and planting the entire woodlands here <laughs> from the get go. I think that keeping things a little bit closer to the house and being able to track progress and care for them properly um, is really the way to go. So this is all of the existing stuff. Um, I've picked up some herbs and flowers and things that I like to um, use as my pioneer species in the garden. And so, you know, in the wild, uh, in nature, you have pioneer species after any major event um, that will come back in 
and or any disruption really to the soil, they'll come back in and they'll recolonize and like you'll have, you know, various grasses and things that we consider to be weeds that kind of set the stage for, you know, those little acorns and pine cones and whatnot to pop up from the ground and then start growing a canopy again. And so it's not really um, terribly different as far as I'm concerned when it comes to putting in herbs and flowers and stuff long before your vegetables um, and also cover crops um, or anything really to keep the soil covered and help to prep it without robbing it of a ton of nutrients. So I tend to look towards um, longer season annual flowers and then also perennial herbs to sort of do some of that work. Um, and so the plans for those guys, <laughs> all of that is to say that the plans for those guys, um, I'm definitely going to, I got this artichoke and I'm going to try and protect it from the wind up here. And so that's probably going to go in this little front bed. This little front bed's going to get full very, very quickly. <laughs> um, but just looking at it from like a size perspective, it seems like a good spot to try and get it to be a perennial. Um, this way is north for the house. And so using that wall to protect this guy a little bit from the north wind. And then around these edges, I will more than likely, I've already put, I think I put like a wildflower mix or an herb mix, I don't remember. But I'm getting impatient waiting for seeds like three days later. So I'm gonna plug in some plants too. Um, but I'll probably put some of the culinary herbs right around here, just so that they're right out, again, right out the front door, so that they're easy to go and grab a little bit of if you're cooking. And then moving, you know, through the rest of this space, I'm not really doing much in this lawn space yet. I want to see what develops. Um, the soil there's really nice. The soil everywhere is fairly nice, actually. So working with that and kind of waiting to see, you know, what springs up aside from the little bits of grass. And so along the bottom of this retaining wall though, I might put, no, I'm going to put some mint, um, just a couple of patches of it and spots that I've seen that are fairly soggy and get some of that just running along there because I think that would be lovely. And then um, I've got a couple of calendulas that I think I'll put a few up near these stumps. Um, Eventually, we're going to put some trees in here, I think, like between these stumps, and I'm not entirely sure what yet. Um, something in the Mediterranean climate tree families like figs or olives. And then I have a few other um, herbs that I like to plant, like echinacea, yarrow, like really great pollinator plants. And so because they're so pollinator friendly, there's some space between these grapevines as we move this way off the page. And so I'm going to plant um, those pollinator friendly things up there where they're a little bit further away from the house, where they're still close to the raised beds, and um, you know, you're not walking through a path of bees, although that might happen anyway since they put wildflower seeds everywhere already. So, um, oh yeah, I got some pineapple guavas too, and those might also go, um, I think I might just start putting them in between here, and then we can always drop some trees or do some pruning. Um, it's so hard for me to find permanent placement for things, but I try to you know, make some sense of it and plan with the future in mind versus it being like willy nilly, like I said. Um, one of the things that I do recommend paying attention to, like I'm looking at the box of plants that I have here next to me, and there's things like uh, pineapple sage in this box that I know is going to get become a very large shrub at some point. And so, really considering, you know, where that sort of thing will go. And like how much of a focal point do I want it to be? How much do I want to prune it? Um, if it's front and center versus is there a corner I can let it go wild in? Again, there's a whole like retaining wall bed that I've been working on over here. And then also behind the house, some garden in the shade. So I'll have to do more sketches um, if this makes sense at least. Because that's kind of what I typically do. And a little bit of like a behind the scenes really is sort of draw out, you know, what I'm looking at. Um, doing and then have an idea of where I want to place plants. And then I'll carry them out there and place them and then they'll sort of help me decide, you know, if it's a good spot for them or not. And so half of this might change, but there's things that I know feel like good spots for them right now. So yeah, I'm going to leave it at that today. Um, and you know, with the looks around and whatnot, hopefully you don't have too many crazy questions, but um, we're going to try something different, you know, moving forward as far as 
the way that we break instructions down. Um, it's really more just about the thought process for me. And so trying to do my best to document some uh, method to the madness, some bit of thought process here or there. Uh, so yeah, like, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, until next time, happy gardening. Mm -hmm.